Hello everyone and welcome back to the TCEC Season 17 Super Final uh, in uh, Game 96 between Lila Chess Zero and Stockfish. The Super Final already ended, but uh, since the whole uh, Magnus Invitational and then the Nations Cup started, uh, we didn't have a, a catch to uh, at least to draw some sort of a conclusion from this whole Super Final thing. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what this is, uh, well, basically Lila and Stockfish are playing 100 chess games against each other. These are classical games uh, and they are uh, playing pre-arranged openings. So first Lila will have a certain line with the white pieces, then Stockfish will have that exact same line in the exact same opening with the, the, the white pieces. So, uh, so it's fair uh, and it's uh, a lot more interesting for us as we get to see uh, a, lot of, a lot of different openings. So, like I said, this is game 96, Lila with the white pieces, and Lila opens with e4. Uh, we have e6, the French defense by Stockfish, d4, d5, uh, and uh, e5, the advanced variation of the French, and the now b6. Uh, and this is the last book move uh, as, of, uh, as of move uh, 3. Uh, we don't have a completely new game, but we do have now uh, 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 Lila's first move, basically. Uh, so here, Lila goes for h4. Uh, we have c5 striking in the center and now c3 as you would usually do in the advanced French. Uh, and now there is one game in the database where knight to d7 was played but here Stockfish goes for knight to c6. And already as of move 5 we have a completely new game. That's why I'm saying that uh, uh, due to uh, openings being prearranged we have uh, new games uh, already as of move 5. Uh, so knight to f3. Uh, we have bishop to d7, uh, both Lila and Stockfish just keep developing pieces, bishop to d3 and queen to c7 now. Uh, we have castles by Lila and here Stockfish grabs on d4. We have c captures on d4, but Lila doesn't recapture but rather just bishop to f4, develops a piece uh, and defends the e5 pawn. Uh, and offers of course the c3 pawn. So first Stockfish plays um, uh, a6, we have a3 by Lila and now Stockfish accepts the pawn, we have d captures on c3. Uh, knight captures on c3 and now b5. Uh, so rook to c1, developing the rook, putting it on the same uh, file as the queen and it is the only open file on the board. Uh, and the queen to b6, now getting the queen away from the c file, bishop back to e3, attacking the queen and queen b8 now again putting pressure on the e5 pawn. Uh, but rook to e1, and it's a very tricky idea why the e5 pawn uh, should not be captured. So uh, if knight captures an e5, which of course was not played in the game, do you see how white wins the game on the spot? Uh, it's, uh, it's a very sneaky tactic, uh, so even feel free to pause the video and try to figure it out while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the E file needs to open up. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, you can start with Knight Captures on E5, but this is more precise. Just Knight Captures on D5 and that's it. And it doesn't matter what black plays, even if you capture on F3 first with check, uh, you're just going to play Queen Captures and now uh, that's, that, that's all there is. You, you don't have a good reply, of course, if you capture the Knight and Bishop F4. Check just picks up the queen, so not not a lot of fun in that. And if you don't capture the knight, uh, well, uh, you, you don't have uh, you don't have a lot of good moves. For example, if you continue development, bishop to d6, you get bishop to d4. Uh, and again, now you cannot capture the knight uh, as the file has opened up. There's the threat of bishop captures on g7, and after the king goes here, just queen g4, and uh, black will ver very quickly. Uh, uh, suffer a terrible fate. For example, f6, you, you need to block queen captures on g7, and you're gonna get, uh, well, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of ideas are possible here, uh, such as uh, you, you can go uh, knight to b6, attack the rook, you can even go rook captures on e6 is an idea, and then after bishop captures, you get queen captures on e6, and there are simply, simply too many threats. Uh, for example, if uh, let's say you try and uh, defend the, the seventh rank, uh, you you just lose uh, the rook there. And if you try something like let's say the, the queen can't move, the queen needs to keep an eye on the bishop here. So not uh, it's uh, basically you can't make a move. Let's say if you try something like knight here, uh, just rook to c7. You add another attacker, and that's just it. You cannot capture because of just queen captures here, and uh, it's just. Um, just a, a t terrible position, for example, captures, you're going to get queen captures on e7, king g8, and now bishop to f5 coming over here. So uh, a lot of madness here, which uh, which uh, happens if the 
uh, if this is captured. Uh, but uh, there, there are other ideas, for example, knight captures on d5. You don't have to capture the knight, you can immediately capture the pawn, but it's still bad because of bishop to f4. Now there's a triple attack on the knight, you, there's no longer uh, an opportunity to capture here, uh, as there's the pin, and if f6 just defending, then you just get knight captures, e captures, and now just bishop captures on e5, attacking the queen. And after the queen moves, uh, most likely to a light square, as you don't want to allow any nasty discoveries. So now, again, a lot of move, moves win, like rook c7, you can go bishop captures on g7, check, pick up the rook here. Uh, so completely falling apart. And of course, uh, lastly, but not leastly, after knight captures here, uh, if you don't capture here or here, you can play something uh, completely different. Uh, but it won't help you. For example, if bishop to c6, uh, you're gonna get knight to b6, and there is no uh, there is no good way to counter this. Uh, for example, uh, bishop captures on f3, you're gonna capture with the g pawn, and you lose the rook here. Uh, because if the rook moves, uh, of course, rook to c8 check just picks up the queen, and that's it. So, uh, after rook to e1, of course the e5 pawn uh, is not free for grabs, but it, it's not uh, at all simple why it's not free for grabs, so congratulations to everyone who, uh, who decided to, to, to check it out. Uh, knight g to e7 by stockfish, and now b4. So expanding on the queen side, not allowing black to grab more space on the queen side, and white for the moment controls the c file, uh, but is down a pawn. So we'll see is uh, is this uh, pawn sacrifice justified or not. With h6 and now h5, grabbing even more space on the king side uh, with uh, h4, h5. We have queen to b7 now uh, and bishop to f4. Now de uh, defending the pawn, preparing to shift the knight. Uh, uh, over to over to d4 like knight here then the knight can go here you can trade off the uh, these knights so rook to c8 black also grabs hold of the open c file and now queen to d2 connecting rooks we have rook to c7 uh, and now bishop to g3 uh, just uh, getting getting the bishop to, to a safer square uh, we have rook to g8 now hoping to open up the king side and now rook to c2 preparing to double up on the c file uh, we have rook back to c8 by stockfish not uh, not a lot of active moves, obviously a waiting move. Uh, and now knight to e2, preparing to go to d4 to, to trade some knights here. And here knight to a7, offering up uh, a rook trade. We have knight f to d4, and now rook captures on c2. We have queen captures on c2, and now knight back to c6. And here bishop to h7. Uh, Lila wants to see if stockfish, uh, stockfish is interested in repeating the position. We have rook to h8, and now bishop back to d3. And stockfish repeats rook to g8. We have bishop to h7 and now rook back to h8. We have now f4. Of course, Lila not interested in a draw with the white pieces. Uh, even though down upon uh, the position is uh, uh, is very hard uh, for black to play. So knight captures on d4. We have knight captures and now queen to c8. Offering a trade of queens and now rook to c1 by Lila. Uh, stockfish trades. We have captures, captures. Uh, of course, not with the rook as the bishop would hang. So bishop captures on c2. Uh, and now knight to c6, offering yet more trades, and now bishop to f2. And here uh, you can see that even though uh, both white and black have a bishop pair, black's bishop pair isn't really doing anything. So black really needs to figure out how to how to go about this. Although it's not easy with the position being completely uh, completely closed, uh, and no bishops can uh, can go anywhere. Well, uh, whereas uh, uh, white's dark square bishop slices nicely over here, and white's light square bishop slices nicely over here. So that's uh, a good bishop pair versus a bad bishop pair. So knight back to b8, uh, Stockfish not interested in trading off his only active piece, uh, and bishop to d3 now, just uh, improving the uh, the position of the bishop, increasing the activity. We have bishop to e7, and now rook to c7, as black allowed it. So of course king to d8, pushing the rook back, and now rook to c2. We have king back to e8, Stockfish says, okay, I'm down with a draw here, but Lila goes g4. And okay, we have rook to g8, and now king to g2. Lila starts improving the position of the king, uh, whereas Stockfish doesn't really have active moves. So king to d8, and king to g3 now. We have rook to h8, uh, Stockfish just keeps repeating moves, and rook to c1. We have rook to g8, and now uh, bishop to g1. Uh, we have g6, and now uh, Stockfish needs to do something, uh, and h captures on g6. Uh, we have f captures on g6, and now bishop to e3. 
so still, uh, even though you opened up this dark square bishop a little bit, you don't really have any active ideas uh, to go with that. So h5 by black, but now just g5. Again, closing off the dark square bishop, and the king will keep an eye on the on, on the h pawn. So king e8, we have rook to c7 again, and now king to f7, not, not repeating uh, king to d8, uh, as then uh, the, the rook can come to a7, and it's not going to be very dangerous for the rook there. So king f7 instead, and now bishop back, uh, sorry, bishop back to b1. Uh, we have rook to d8, now guarding the bishop, so maybe you can somehow activate the knight, although it's incredibly difficult, because with the knight on d4 and the rook here, uh, the c6 square is controlled by Leela, and with the c6 square, well, <laughs> c6 square controlled by Leela, you can never go knight c6 or bishop to c6, and the stockfish is just stuck here. So, knight back to f3, uh, and now uh, we have d4. Uh, and it, it's a uh, stockfish gives back a pawn, but it's. Uh, it's not at all clear uh, what else you would play. You don't have a pawn move. You don't. You can't move any of your pieces. You can't. Uh, it's uh, it's just hard. For example, if you try something like rook to g8, if you repeat a rook move, then bishop to a7 comes, and now uh, you just lose the game uh, because uh, you are attacking the defender of the bishop here. The bishop has nowhere to go. You still have. Uh, still have nothing. If bishop c6 now just captures the knight and then you pick up the bishop and uh, that's that's just it. The, the bishop cannot go back because then the knight is not defended so it would be terrible. So here Stockfish instead uh, to, uh, to save, uh, save the game uh, for the moment uh, goes d4. He gives up a pawn. Knight captures on d4 by Leela and now rook to c8 offers up uh, a rook trade. Uh, and here comes uh, rook to b7, uh, declining the trade. We have rook back to d8. You could go rook to c3, attacking the bishop, but then the king moves to, uh, to f2, and again, you, you will have some problems here, uh, as the knight is under attack, and you cannot move the knight as the bishop hangs. So instead, after rook to b7, we have rook to d8, uh, defending the bishop once again, and now bishop to e4. So again, Leela just grabbing more space. Rook to e8, the stockfish is doomed to, to repeat moves, and now king to f2, starting to improve the position of the king. Uh, and here, uh, again, probably probably disgusted with the position, so to say, uh, stockfish goes for h4. Uh, we have king to g2 by Leela, and now rook to c8. Uh, stockfish grabs hold of the open c file, and now bishop to f2. Uh, just... Uh, uh, per, uh, goes after the h4 pawn, but there is no rush in capturing it since uh, you can always capture it. There's no way white can prevent that, uh, black can prevent that. So bishop to e8 and now rook to b6. Now putting pressure on the e6 pawn, so bishop has to go back. We have bishop to d uh, bishop to d7, uh, and now comes king to h2. Uh, although you could you could capture the pawn right away, but uh, Lila decides for king to h2. Uh, and here we have a5, so trying to break up the position on the other side to, to activate the bishop pair this way. But okay, b captures on a5, uh, and now bishop to d8, attacking the rook, and you're going to recapture on a5 later on. So rook to b7, and now bishop captures on a5. We have knight captures on b5, and now king to g8. Uh, we have knight to d6 now, attacking the rook, and rook to f8, going after uh, the f4 pawn, and bishop to e3 now. Uh, we have bishop to c6 offering a trade, and here Leela says no problem, we have captures, captures, and now knight back to e4. So Stockfish was able to activate the pieces, but it cost him a lot of material, since uh, when this whole uh, uh, <laughs> operation started, uh, Stockfish was up upon, but now uh, after rook to f7 and the trade of rooks that happened, captures, captures, we have bishop to f2, and now this pawn is a goner as well. So from being up a pawn to being down two pawns, that's uh, what it took to save the position and somewhat activate the piece pieces. So knight e7, uh, but now bishop captures on h4. And this is, of course, now winning uh, uh, in a game between Leela and Stockfish when either Leela or Stockfish is, is up two pawns. It's pretty much a done deal. Uh, so, uh, and it's pretty much a matter of just converting the advantage of two pawns, which is not a problem for an engine. Uh, but uh, I, I will show it as it is uh, as it is uh, an interesting endgame. So knight d5 uh, going after the pawn here, bishop g3 defending, and now bishop to c7. Now Stockfish will uh, have to stall for as long as possible. We have bishop to a5, king g4 now, uh, and king to e7. And okay, bishop back to f2, we have king to d7, king to f3, and now king to c6. Uh, we have bishop to e3, and now bishop to c3. Uh, just uh, 
uh, seeing if uh, if white is maybe interested in giving up a uh, knight for a bishop. Uh, Lila not interested, just bishop to c1, and now bishop to d4. Uh, we have king to e2. Uh, the bishop now nicely defends both of these pawns that uh, are, are perhaps uh, vulnerable to attacks. So bishop back to c5, and now king to d3. Slowly but surely Lila improves the position of the king. Bishop f8, and now king to c4. Uh, we have knight b6 check, and now king to c3. Bishop to e7, and now king to d3. We have knight to d5, and now king to c4. So improving the position even more. If the a pawn starts marching up the board, that's uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, we have bishop to d8, and now knight to f6. Uh, hoping to tra trade off a pair of knights. So knight to b6 check, king to b3, and now knight to a8. Again, just waiting to see how Lila will try to progress. Uh, we have bishop to d2 and now bishop to b6. Uh, we have a4, starting to push the passed pawn, and now knight to c7. So you don't want to over push it uh, just because you can, uh, but uh, you could play it, but Lila, Lila decides to improve the position even further. King to c4 and now bishop back to a7. We have king to d3 now and the bishop back to c5. Knight to e4 now, going after the bishop, and the bishop back to f8. We have king to c4, and now bishop to a3. Uh, not allowing uh, the, the king to, to, to cross uh, using this uh, diagonal. We have knight to c3, and now knight to a6. Uh, we have bishop to e3, and now bishop to b4. So Stockfish uh, created a, a barrier here. The two pawns control the three pawns nicely on the king side, and the king in two pieces control the past a pawn. So... Can he uh, uh, perhaps hold this? Uh, well, knight to e2 by Lila, and now bishop to e1. Uh, we have knight to d4 with check, king to d7, and now knight to b3. So slowly but surely making progress, threatening knight to c5 check to, to exchange the knight here. So king to c6, and now a5, finally. Uh, we have uh, bishop to g3 now, putting pressure on the pawn here, uh, but it's not a problem. Knight to d4 check, we have king to d7, and now comes bishop to d2. Uh, and here it's a problem uh, for black, as what do you what do? You do? Uh, the king b5 is coming, and if you try something like bishop to f2 to, to try and keep an eye on the knight, then you get knight to c2. And after the bishop moves, yes, you grab hold of this diagonal, but now it's bishop to e3, uh, trying to trade off the bishops. And after the bishop moves, now again, king b8, and the king uh, finally infiltrates the position, and the a pawn will queen. So instead, Lila tried bishop to, uh, sorry, Stockfish tried bishop to h2, but now it's fairly simple. When you have a bishop uh, on the edge of the board, uh, then you just go knight to e2. And now the knight controls all of the squares that the bishop can use to get back into the game. So now it's fairly simple you will just march your king over here and pick up the bishop and that's it and that's exactly what uh, uh, what happened in the game we have king c6 bishop e3 now uh, knight to c7 uh, we have bishop to c1 uh, and knight to d5 uh, we have bishop to d2 now uh, the, the bishop also controls the movements of the knight while this knight controls the movements of the bishop knight to e7 and now king to d3 uh, we have king to b7 uh, and now king to e4. So slowly but surely the king makes his way to the king side. Knight f5 and now king to f3. We have knight to h4 check. Now you first kick away the knight, king g4. Knight has to go back and now king to h3. And there is no defense uh, against king captures bishop. So bishop to g1 and now knight captures on g1. Uh, we have knight to d4 and now... Uh, of course, like in every other game Leela plays, uh, whenever Leela goes up material, she immediately starts giving material back, and here Leela goes f5. And it's very interesting, uh, <laughs> uh, point is, you free the, the f4 square with the knight, because if either of the pawn captures, then uh, you've created a passed pawn, uh, and wow, those, are, those were some bad arrows. And of course, if the knight captures, then knight e2, and you've uh, freed the f4 square for the knight, so when the knight comes to f4, you can uh, easily eliminate the g6 or the e6 pawn, create a pass pawn, and uh, just win the game. So after f5, we have e captures on f5 instead uh, of knight captures, as you, we've just seen what happens here. And it's always uh, like this with Leela. I, I find that uh, this this gif uh, perfectly illustrates uh, Leela's behavior after after she's up material, like uh, and the the money here being the material. So th there you have it. Uh, but yeah, I thought you might enjoy that uh, reference. Uh, so, bishop to e3, attacking the knight. We have knight goes back to e6, and now just knight to e2. Uh, we have f4, 
uh, giving up some material back. So that's that's uh, that there's no point in playing this game any longer. But uh, engines do play it out until the evaluation by both engine is like uh, more than plus ten or something like that. So knight captures on g5 check. We have king to g4 and now knight back to f7. Uh, we have knight captures on g6 and here king to a6. Finally going after that pawn, but king f5 and here. Uh, Stockfish just played knight captures on an e5 to sort of try and be funny, I guess. Uh, and it was also in this position that Stockfish resigned the game, or rather, both engines agreed that uh, the, the game is wi absolutely winning for white. So Leela did not even capture the knight, and this is it. Uh, 109 moves, and what a game it was. So basically, uh, after the interesting part, which is like the first uh, 30 moves, uh, let's say up to this point... Uh, yeah, already, already here, uh, let's say, uh, uh, okay, maybe, okay, up to, up to this point, uh, black is ba black is basically completely lost. There's no way to play, uh, there's no way to get the pieces into the game. White's control of the c6 square completely uh, eliminates uh, any play from black. The bishops are useless, the king cannot enter the game as the c file belongs to the white rook and there is no way for this rook to enter the game. So basically the game is over but uh, of course the engines need to play it out. But I, I thought this was a very interesting game so I decided to show this one, it was game 96. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marcus Van Atten, uh, Eric Gogniat, uh, Frank Olsen, Tom Murphy, and Michael Truesdale for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the Morphe saga uh, and, uh, well, w whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.